Welcome back to Copper Star Precision. Today we're going over a little bit more educational video on the differences and similarities between MOA and MILS, or MRAD sometimes referred to. And the reason we're doing this is it's going to set up a few extra videos down the line, and I want to make sure everyone has a base level understanding of what these are. If you're a seasoned shooter, this is probably old news for you, but more targeted at the beginner shooter, we need to start talking about the language when it comes to dialing optics and expressing things in terms of MOA or MILS. So let's just jump right into it. If you're liking the content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Leave comments down below if you have any questions. So we have an agenda for today's presentation. We're gonna talk about some definitions. We're gonna go over some trigonometry. Don't worry if it's giving you PTSD flashbacks to high school geometry, it won't be that bad, I'll walk you through it. We're gonna talk about angles and distance and the relationship between the two. We're gonna talk about scope adjustments and some scope choices that you might make when you're picking out a next scope or learning how to use your scope the most efficiently. So, MOA and MILS or MRAD. I'll, I'll switch between the two because they're interchangeable, but let's define them. MOA stands for minute of angle. MIL or MRAD stands for milliradian or milliradian. Um, all you need to know is that both are angular measurements. So there's ways of measuring angles. So let's define what those angles are. An MOA, a minute of angle, is 1 60th of a degree. I think most people are familiar that there are 360 degrees in a circle. So we have 360 degrees, you take one of those degrees, you divide it into 60 parts, and that little sliver of an angle is one minute of angle. A mil, or a milliradian, just like a millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter, a milliradian is one one thousandth of a radian. Now, people usually don't work in radians, uh, especially in the United States, we more so talk about things in degrees, but a radian is simply this uh, and this diagram is basically showing you that in the red we have the radius of the circle if you take that radius of the circle and you take that same distance along the circumference of the circle the angle that forms from that distance of the circumference of the circle is defined as one radian now there are two times pi radians in a circle and the reason of that for that becomes from the unit circle something you might have talked about in geometry class with a radius of one the circumference of the circle is two times the diameter. So a radius of one, diameter is two. And the di di uh, diameter times uh, pi is the circumference of the circle. So there are two pi radians in a circle. Or if we convert that, you know, pi is 3.14. So there are 6.283 radians in a circle, or there are 6,283 milliradians in a circle. I know that sounds really complicated, but it's all going to make sense in a little bit. All you need to know, these are measures of angles, angular measurements. So now everyone's most feared subject, trigonometry. It's not that bad. We have a right triangle ABC with an angle A that we denote theta. That's the Greek uh, symbol for theta, usually used to denote angles. And if we remember from geometry class, tangent of theta uh, is the, opposite, the length of the opposite side over the adjacent side. In this case, the length CB over AB. So if we take the tangent of that angle and we set that angle to be one ohm MOA or 1 60th of a degree, we get the length CB over, let's just say a distance called 100 yards. So let's start plugging in numbers to our calculator. We get the tangent of 1 60th of a degree times 100 yards, solving for the length CB, doing some dimensional analysis. There's three, foot, three feet in a yard, 12 inches and one foot, and we get 1.047 inches. So just about one inch. And I think what people are most familiar at is the angle versus distance. And that's where we get images like this and shorthand, where we say one MOA is about one inch per 100 yards. Remember, it's an angular measurement, so it, it varies on the distance, the, the sort of the height or the width of something varies with distance. So right in the middle there, we have 100 yards. So one MOA is one inch at that distance. At 200 yards, it's about two inches. Remember, it's one in a little bit, so it's not exactly two. At 300 yards, it's three inches and so on. At 1,000 yards, it'd actually be 10 and a half inches, not 10 inches, uh, because that, that rounding starts to catch up with us. So I think this is what most people are familiar with when they talk about MOA. You know, I have a sub-MOA gun. You know, what does that mean in terms of rifle accuracy? That means that at 100 yards, a rifle that is some sub-MOA has a group size that is less than one inch. Now, how you measure that group, there's a lot of debate there. You can either go center to center, you can go edge to edge, you can go extreme spread, you can go you know, group mean average, all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that in future videos. But just know that if you can put 
five, ten rounds within a one-inch circle at 100 yards, your gun is said to be capable of achieving one minute of angle of accuracy. And I think a lot of factory rifles with match ammunition uh, on the market today, as, as long as they come from a reputable manufacturer, are capable of doing that. And the precision game, that's kind of the baseline standard, is that one MOA, so one inch at 1,000 yards, or half an inch at 50 yards. So remember, it varies with distance. So let's talk about milliradians or, or MRADs, mills. We're going to do the same exact thing, except here we're going to substitute the one oh, one thousandth of a radian in for our uh, degrees. And when we do the same calculation for the same 100 yards, one milliradian, one mil at 100 yards is 3.6 inches. Now, does that mean that MOA is better because it's a finer adjustment? Well, it has to do with what your scope is capable of. So if we look at MOA scopes, there are click adjustments. There typically can be one MOA, half MOA, quarter MOA, eighth MOA per click. And what you'll know is that on your turrets, if it's your elevation or your windage turret, you'll notice that here, this turret is a quarter MOA per click. Generally speaking on mill turrets, it's 0.1 mils per click. And I have some examples of some Hawk uh, turrets here. And you can see one click is equal to one tenth of one mil. So what exactly does that mean? So remember that one MOA is about an inch at 100 yards. So a quarter MOA is one fourth of that or a quarter inch, 0.25 inches at 100 yards. So each click adjustment on the scope turret should move the point of impact quarter of an inch at 100 yards. It would move it half an inch at 200 yards. It would move it an eighth of an inch at 50 yards. And we're gonna talk about this in future videos. This is just defining terms here. One tenth of a mil, remember that a mil was 3.6 inches at 100 yards. So if we divide that by 10, we get 0.36 inches at 100 yards. So they're relatively close within a tenth of an inch, but you notice that a quarter MOA is a finer adjustment than a tenth of a mil. However, most people in the PRS and NRL world use mil scopes. I think working in base 10, sort of the metric style of doing things, is a little bit more straightforward um, than thinking about quarter, half, three quarter, and then full uh, mil adjustments, right? On the other side, the super accurate side, F-class shooters and bench rest shooters actually choose scopes that have eighth MOA scopes for the finest adjustment possible. So they have extremely fine adjustments, extremely fine aiming points. Um, they want the maximum resolution when it comes to each click on their turret to make those minute adjustments. So in summary, it's a quick video just to give you an idea. MOA and mills are angular units of measurement. That's all we really need to know. One is not necessarily better than the other, but each has their use case. So where do we go from here? We've defined what MOA and mill, mills are so we can explore their usage in the shooting discipline. And again, we're starting to talk about the language of shooting. So we need to know these things. So future videos will include how to zero your optic. It talks about, you know, we're gonna talk about how much adjustment do you need to make in your turrets to get your optic zeroed for a certain distance. We'll talk about um, reticle designs. So different reticles have different subtensions. So you might have heard of a mill dot reticle or Christmas tree reticles, right? All of these have different advantages um, and some disadvantages uh, when it comes to the different shooting disciplines, right? Sometimes you may want to find crosshair. Sometimes you want, might want a Christmas tree reticles that has uh, striations for wind ho holdovers and all that good stuff. We can use MOA or mills to range targets. So just by knowing uh, what our scope is and kind of knowing distance to the target or the size of the target, we can range that target or find out that target size. We can convert known targets and distances into MOA or MRAD, a very requested video on this channel, which I'll be posting next. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel for updates on that. I think that's gonna be a pretty good video for everyone to get more points in the shooting disciplines, especially when it comes to PRS and NRL 22 type matches. We can measure group sizes, like I mentioned earlier. Um, we can dial a scope versus holding over. So we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages to those. And there's so much more. I mean, really everything around the shooting sports is designed around these angular measurements because we're essentially looking at trajectories uh, and trajectories have to do with the angle of your scope versus the angle of the barrel and has to do with the gravitational effects and the elemental effects on the flight path of the bullet. So everything is angles, it's all trigonometry. Um, we don't have to know the math, but we should be familiar with the terms. And that's the point of this video. So I hope you enjoyed and until next time, get more points.